Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. All right, Kansas, number two in the country. They're at home against TCU, a team that put a whooping on them last year at Allen Fieldhouse. Uh, but this TCU team honestly hadn't done a damn thing for the most part this year. They hadn't played anybody. Uh, I thought Kansas was going to roll past them. Uh, they didn't. It took a inadvertent elbow, and, and that was the difference in the game tonight. TCU was up 79-77. They were up two. They got the rebound. Uh, the kid, Ernest Uday, who was a Kansas player, transferred. It was a steal. It wasn't a rebound. Year. He stole a pass. Steal. Steal. And then he swings his elbow and catches Hunter Dickinson uh, in the uh, face. And and Hunter goes down uh, like a heavyweight fighter, goes down hard, and they end up calling a flagrant one. And Hunter goes to the line. He hits two free throws. Kansas gets the ball. DeWan Harris hits a runner with under a minute left to go up 81-79. Uh, TCU comes back down. They tie it, and they go to Hunter with three seconds left, and he ends up winning the game. He is 30-11. and 11. But, Jarrell, the question I want to ask you is, these flagrant ones, I don't remember if they existed. Anything even close existed when you played. But these things are a little – I know by the letter of the law – it's got to be called a flagrant one. But, like, what do we do about this? Because it changed the game. Kansas should have lost this game. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, it's, it's a, it was an absolute travesty. And I sat there and obviously uh, I text you guys right after I saw it. But, man, if I was Jamie Dixon, uh, I would still be chasing those refs uh, okay. back to the locker room after the game. Man, it, it was absolutely unbelievable. It was, uh, it was uncalled for. And the craziest thing, just going through the steps of it all, was number one, they didn't call a foul on the play initially. Uh, TCU was up two points going the other way with an advantage break because, like you said, Hunter Dickinson, uh, you know, fell out like a, like a, like he got hit by uh, Macho Man Randy Savage uh, a after the inadvertent shot to the chops. But, uh, you know, he caught, he, he caught one. It was clearly looking at the replay inadvertent. Uh, there's no there's no way, shape, or form that you can tell me you saw that replay and the ref was able to deem that something that that kid did intentionally. Uh, you know, it was a, it was coming after, I think I want to say it was after, it was an ATO, it was after the timeout play. They were drawing up a play to try to get to a duck in for Dickinson. Uh, and to be honest, it was a shitty play, and, and, and TCU did a really good job of defending it. And, uh, and the kid got a steal off of it. You know, there's a little bit of jostling down there, and, you know, he – accidentally kind of catches him in the mouth with his offhand as he's securing the steal and going the other way. So number one, they stopped play and stopped the four on five advantage break, which uh, essentially could have put TCU up four to five points. They go, they, they, that was the first mistake I felt like. And then they stop it. They go to the replay and they call it a flagrant one foul. That's a six point swing in the two point game for a team that's on the road. And like I said, it was, it was, it was, visibly not intentional 
uh, you know, it was a physical game. It was a tough, hard fall game. I think it was just a really, it was a really bad ending, man, to what was a hard fall game. And I feel, you know what I mean? TCU got hosed a little bit with this one, man. Uh, wasn't the best showing again from Kansas. And they've kind of been having this going for a while now. Uh, just the up and downs, everything they've been doing has, hasn't been very impressive. But uh, I feel, I feel bad for the, uh, for the frog horns tonight. You have to, right, Rob? Goodness. You got to feel bad for Dixon. This is what you need yeah. going in there. It's a fog warning. <laughs> you know what you know. You know what's going to happen when you walk in that building. You're going to be playing eight on five. And and um, I, I look, college basketball is the sport that is the second most in the world, right? When it comes to having officials be swayed by home court environments, it just is what it is. Those are human beings out there. These are raucous environments. There's 10, 12, 14, what, 17, thousand people. Whatever what's it is. What's number one? L football. Europe, what's number one? European, European soccer. Soccer, yeah, European soccer for yeah, sure. European, yeah, yeah. European soccer is the one that's swayed most by officials. But, um, but it's it's men's college basketball that's second, and it just it is what it is. And Kansas is one of the best home court environments in the country. They've won national titles. They have Bill Self on the sideline. He's intimidating. That place is intimidating. That fan base is intimidating. It is what it is. You're going in there knowing that that's what's going to end up happening. So you're not going to be surprised when it is and. To me, like this is just kind of – it's a little bit fluky. It's the downside of having replay review for everything. It's going to happen when we're trying to make sure we get every single call right. I don't love it. I think this has more to do with the way that replay is instituted in college basketball than it does with anything having to do with the officiating, right? Like – as soon as they go to the monitor and they see that, they kind of have to call it. I think that that is what the rule is. I hate it. I don't like it, it but it is what it, it is. is. It sucks. Maybe we change it, it sucks. to yeah. Maybe maybe we change it to something where um, coaches on on uh, basketball. Staff, how about you don't get two yeah, fouls, you, Rob? How about you don't get two free throws and the ball? Like it, it just completely changed the game. Yeah, or or it's something like you only get two challenges, right? We don't have to review every single time it goes out of bounds to see who the ball is and whether or not there's 10.3 seconds or 10.9 seconds left, right? If you are a coach, you get two challenges. I think that's the easiest way to do it moving forward so that, you know, maybe Kentucky uses a challenge there and they win, but um, it is what it is. I, I, I want to talk more about where – I'd say the, uh, Kentucky. I meant Kansas there. Um, I want to talk about more where Kansas is as a team here because win or lose, I think what we can all agree on is that Kansas has been playing with fire a little bit, right? Um, if you look at some of the wins that they have had this season, uh, they struggled at home a little bit against the UConn team that I think a lot of people thought um, was – uh, was not as good as them heading into that game, right? They struggled at Indiana. They did not play their best against Yale. And now they are playing a TCU team that hadn't really done anything before this, uh, and they probably should have lost the game. Um, if you look at where they are in a lot of the metrics, like right now, uh, Kansas in um, in Ken Palm's rankings is currently sitting at number 16. Uh, I, I want to know when we start questioning whether or not the close games that this team is finding a way to win – um, is a result of them just being able to find a way to get it done. And I, look, they're going to come right. The, Johnny Furphy's going to develop. Nick Timberlake's going to develop. Jamar McDowell, someone's going to be able to step up into the, that, that off-guard spot. Or if this is something that is a little bit more concerning. Because I go back and forth, and I, I don't even, honestly, like I'm supposed to have takes here, guys. I don't even really know what my take is in this situation. Because I think that there's when you have a great point guard, when you have one of the best players in college basketball like Hunter Dickinson, and when you have Bill Self on the sideline, you're going to win more games uh, than other teams when it comes to getting down to that final possession, winning close games. You're just going to be able to eke it out more. But at the same time, it's like, okay, someone's going to catch fire against this team in a tournament and knock them out in the second round, right? I think that's kind of where I'm at with it at this point. They're probably going to win the Big 12, at least be right there with Houston. But I just – I'm having trouble talking myself into them – being able to make a deep run in March when they play with fire. It just feels like they're playing with their food a little bit, if that makes sense. Listen, I said that to you at the United Center, mm -hmm. right at the Champions Classic. They they won, and I was still like, you know what? They don't you sometimes you need to see it in person. Again, on paper, we looked at Kansas and we were like, all right, are they one or two? Look, they got Hunter, they got Harris, they got McCuller, they got KJ, they got all this coming back. They don't have shooting. And, and tonight they had three dudes, really. Dewan Harris was not good until late in the game, right? It was all KJ. It was all – and McCullough battled through an injury. Hunter, KJ, McCullough. Nobody else for the first 20 minutes 
With, and again, they're good enough to win games in the Big 12, Terrell, with those guys. Like Rob said, and I said this early, I think they could lose in the second round. Like, I, I don't see this as a Final Four, definitely not as a national title champion. And I know, I can't believe I say this publicly because you could get burnt on this by Bill Self and Hunter Dickinson. I mean, it sounds ridiculous saying that, but I do feel pretty good about saying it. No, yeah, and, and and I'm spot on with you. I think it's it's definitely the most unimpressive thirteen and one team that I can remember in <laughs> some time. Like they're winning games that uh, I guess they're supposed to win just based off of kind of what we had them coming into the season. Uh, but like you said, I think you hit it spot on. Really, almost I would say over a month ago, they go through those lows where they really struggle to score the ball, uh, especially once teams kind of take away Dickinson. If they can't get those th those deep po those deep post seals and post catches or opportunities to throw the ball down to him, they have long stretches where they can really struggle. And I and I really do love uh, – I love DeJuan Harris' game. And at this point, I think he kind of just is who he is. We can't expect him to come out and just start being also uh, ultra-aggressive all of a sudden. But uh, – you know, they lack a little bit of perimeter playmaking and guys that can make shots consistently. And that's something that scares the hell out of me when you start talking about March Madness time. Are they going to be able to dig out of a hole down 15 versus an inferior opponent? I'm not sure because I'm not sure if they'll be able to make enough shots. And to be honest, even the teams that, that are that, that are going to play them close, you know, down the stretch, are they going to be able to come up with something besides being able to get a deep interior touch in the Hunter Dickinson where they're going to be able to flow and run offense? I think they're still figuring it out. Obviously, they're not doomed by any stretch of the imagine, uh, imagination. But right now, I would be on high alert in 13-1, uh, and one, but it doesn't feel great. It is it's kind of the the sense that I'm getting from Kansas. It's not. It hasn't been an impressive thirteen and one start to the year. Can I just right, real I mean, quick my argue first, my, against my no, own point that I just made, break. Goodman? No, we're going uh, let me break. just argue no, real quick with my point. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, all right. Well, listen. The the only thing that I'll say is that you have you have like this championship winning coach. You have. One of the, what, like three best big guys in college basketball, maybe the best big guy not named Zach Eady in college basketball. And you do have sure. two guys that can go make a play. Like uh, Dewan Harris is a point guard, and Kevin McCuller is uh, – he might not be a point guard by definition, but he is a playmaker and a distributor that can get easy shots for other people. So, like, I know I just said all of the stuff about how I can't trust them, but they also have the stuff that with the formula where it just makes sense. And you know they're going to be able to guard. Like, I don't – I'm so confused about them. I don't have any read on Sorry, that. Can, I, I feel hey, like they could. You can go to sleep. You can go to sleep tonight thinking that they're going to be a second round casualty, and you'll wake up tomorrow morning thinking they can win the whole thing. That's fine. Uh, all right. No, you know what I, I'm going to do. I'm going to go to appearance about ever. Four hundred dollars richer because I made a whole bunch of money betting their live line. <laughs> if you ever have any doubt, nobody cares. Just say this. If you ever have any doubt, nobody doubts, cares about bet, you winning your first. Happens. No, listen, when you when, when Kansas is down, go to bet MGM and just bet the money line. Whenever they're losing at home in Fall Allen Fieldhouse, bet however much you want because they're going to find a way to get a win, man. Lock it in. There you go. Let's all get rich together. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.